Hi there, and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this tech tip, I will be looking at how to perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. I will start by looking at the minimum system requirements for Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. Later on in the video, I will demonstrate how to perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 using one of my bare metal servers. So let's get started. Before you install either Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2, you should first ensure that your server meets or exceeds the minimum system requirements. The minimum system requirements are essentially the bare minimum requirements that your server must meet in order to install and run Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2. Understand, if your server fails to meet the minimum system requirements, it is highly likely that the operating system will not install correctly, or even at all. It is also worth noting at this point that the minimum system requirements set forth by Microsoft are just the install requirements. In other words, meeting these requirements will simply guarantee a successful installation of Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2, but not much else. That is, after the installation, if you plan to install roles and features onto the server, these will require their own resources over and above the minimum system requirements. This is why Microsoft strongly recommends that you exceed the minimum system requirements wherever possible. Let's take a look at what the minimum system requirements are. First, we have the processor requirement. To guarantee a successful installation of Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2, you will require a 1.4 GHz 64-bit processor. Both Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 are 64-bit only operating systems. As such, they will not install onto any 32-bit processor. Next is the RAM memory requirement. For a successful installation, you will require at least 512 megabytes of RAM. However, there is one exception to this rule. If you plan to install Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 onto a virtual machine, if you allocate just 512 megabytes of RAM to the virtual machine, Microsoft has acknowledged that the setup could fail. To fix this problem, Microsoft recommends that you allocate more than 800 megabytes of RAM to the virtual machine during the install. After the install, you can always change this back to 512 megabytes of RAM if you wish. The third requirement is the disk space requirement. Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 require at least 32 gigabytes of disk space for a successful installation. However, there are a couple of exceptions where Microsoft do recommend even more disk space. The first exception is if you are installing Windows over the network. Another exception is if your server has more than 16 gigabytes of RAM memory installed. If your system has 16 gigabytes of RAM or more, extra hard disk space is required to accommodate the server's paging file and hibernation and dump files. In addition, the following requirements are optional, but are still recommended by Microsoft. Depending on how you plan to use your server, not all of the following requirements are strictly necessary. First is a DVD drive. If you intend to install Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 using the traditional DVD, a DVD drive is of course, required. If you do plan to install Windows using the DVD, 
be sure that you set your computer's DVD drive as the first bootable device in the server's BIOS. Beyond this, DVD drives, although somewhat deprecated these days, are still a useful medium for installing applications and drivers onto the server. This is why Microsoft still recommends that you have an optical drive of some sort. Second is an Ethernet network adapter. If you plan to install the operating system over the network, an Ethernet network adapter is of course necessary. Even if you were to use an alternative method to install Windows, a network adapter is still required if you plan to connect the server to some kind of network. However, both Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 are perfectly capable of functioning as standalone computers if necessary. In cases where you do install a network adapter, Microsoft recommends a gigabit Ethernet adapter. Of course, slower adapters of 100 megabits per second and even 10 megabits per second are still supported. Next, Microsoft recommends that you use Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 with a monitor that supports a resolution of 1024 by 768 or higher. This is because certain features of the operating system, such as the Windows Store for example, require this resolution. However, if you do not plan to use these features, Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 will work just fine on a lower resolution. The next recommendation is that you use the operating system with a keyboard and mouse, and that you have an internet connection. After installing Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2, you will need to activate it using your product key. This requires an internet connection, but can also be done over the telephone if this is not possible. Furthermore, Microsoft recommends that, after installing the operating system, that you update it with the latest Windows updates, which, of course, requires an internet connection. Now that we know what the minimum system requirements are to install Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2, let's now take a look at how to perform the installation. I will now change over to my bare metal server to show you how to perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Edition. I have already inserted my Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Edition DVD into the server. When I power the server on, the first prompt you should receive is the press any key to boot from CD or DVD prompt. If you do not receive this message, you will likely need to go into the BIOS of your server and make the DVD drive the first bootable device in the boot order. When you receive this message, press any key on the keyboard. Shortly after, the loading files screen will appear. At this point, all of the files required to launch the installation wizard, also called Windows PE, are being pulled off the DVD and loaded into RAM. This can take a couple of minutes to complete depending on the speed of your optical drive. Once all of the files are loaded, the Windows Server 2012 R2 installation wizard will appear. The first screen of the wizard asks you to specify the language to install, the time and currency settings, and the keyboard or input method. To make your life easier after the install, you should select the language, currency, and locality options that best match your geographical location. In my case, since I am in the United Kingdom, I will select United Kingdom for my time and currency. Also, since I am using a UK keyboard, I will select United Kingdom for my keyboard or input method. After selecting your preferred options, click the Next button. On the next screen, you essentially get two options. 
install now, or repair your computer. The repair your computer option essentially gives you access to tools that can be used to repair a Windows server that won't boot up. Since this is a bare metal server with no operating system installed, I will select install now. The next screen will ask you to enter a product key to activate Windows. When you purchase Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2, you will receive a product key along with your installation media. The product key is a unique 25-digit alphanumeric key code. Without a valid product key, you cannot install Windows. Since this is a lab environment, I will enter a product key of all ones and will then click Next. On the next screen, you will be asked to choose the operating system you want to install. In my case, I have a choice of two operating systems. Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Server Core Installation and Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Server with a GUI. The Server Core Installation, which is also the default, will essentially give you a command prompt interface with which to administer your server. The second option, Server with a GUI, will give you the traditional graphical user interface, including a desktop, taskbar, start screen, file explorer, etc. If you are not sure which interface to select, I would recommend that you select Server with a GUI, you can always change it later. After choosing your preferred interface, click Next. Next, we have the License Terms screen. Before you install Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2, you are obliged to agree to the license terms. The license terms dictate what you can and cannot do with the operating system. The terms are available on screen for you to scroll through and read if you wish. Until you agree to the license terms, you cannot install the operating system. To agree to the license terms, tick the I accept the license terms checkbox and then click the next button. The next screen asks you which type of installation you want. The choices you have are an upgrade or a custom installation. If you already have an operating system installed on your server, such as Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2, depending on how it is configured, you may be able to upgrade this to Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2. To perform an upgrade, you are required to boot into your existing operating system, insert your Windows DVD, launch the Windows PE installation wizard, and select the upgrade option. However, if you are planning to install Windows onto a bare metal server that does not yet have an operating system, or if you want to overwrite your existing operating system rather than upgrade it, you should select the custom installation. On the next screen, you will be asked, where do you want to install Windows? On this screen, you are required to choose the hard disk and partition if necessary that you want to install Windows onto. If you have multiple hard disks and partitions, they will be listed here. It is worth noting at this point that the hard disks are numbered starting from zero. Partitions, on the other hand, are numbered starting from one. In my case, I have just one hard disk, drive zero, installed in this server. As you can see, the hard disk is listed as having unallocated space. This is because this hard disk currently has no partitions. On some occasions, you could find that your server's hard disks do not appear at all. This is normally the case when your server's hard disks are connected to some kind of RAID controller card. 
Since it is not possible for Windows PE to obtain every driver for every RAID controller in existence, you may have to specify the driver manually. To do this, you should place the driver for your server's RAID controller onto some sort of removable media, such as a USB flash drive, and then connect this to the server. Next, click on the Load Driver link at the bottom. You can then browse to your removable media device and load the driver. When you are ready to install Windows, simply select the hard disk you want to install the operating system onto and click Next. Since my hard disk is completely unallocated, Windows Setup will create the necessary partitions for me. Immediately, Windows will start to install. Depending on the speed of your server, this could take quite some time. During the installation, the server will need to reboot on a couple of occasions. This is completely normal and the installation will continue from where it left off after the reboot. After the installation, the first task you have to complete is to choose an administrator password. After this, Windows will finalise the settings and will allow you to log on. When I log in, you can now see that we have a perfect installation of Windows Server 2012 R2. This concludes this tech tip on how to perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. I hope you have enjoyed this tech tip. For more Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 tech tips, please feel free to browse our YouTube page. To be notified when we release more videos, remember to subscribe to our channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next tech tip.